Okay, in this video is our uh, one of our first videos, and this is going to cover chapter one, kind of first sections. Uh, so this video is titled 1A, and a lot of this first chapter is honestly review stuff. Um, so there's a lot of slides in this video. There'll be a hard copy, a PDF on the shared folder. So I'm not going to go through every single problem, but I'm going to highlight some certain aspects. Um, notice all the problems, at least in this video, are already worked out, so you can see the answers. So even things that are you tried, there's probably an answer given, but again, you want to try and see if you, you get the same. So I'm going to go through and highlight some of the different topics and objectives uh, in this video. And again, like all videos, you want to refer to the objective document so um, you can have a, a preface of what to expect in, in all of these. Uh, a big part of the chapter one is this number sense. So notice here we have a uh, number line, zero in the middle, and what we have to do is be able to compare certain numbers. You know, how does pi compare to 11 over 4? Which number is bigger? So pi, it's a rational number, we'll talk about it in a little bit, but you know, it's 3.14 dot, 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 and so forth. But it does place in a number line, somewhere between 3 and 4. We can't exactly locate it because the decimal keeps going on forever, but we do know it's bigger than 11 divided by 4. Okay. Um, which is obviously two and three quarters. Okay, we have to be able to know how exponential will work, meaning that we have to move the decimal place four times to the left, so it's a small number, obviously, uh, pretty close to zero. Then we have negative numbers here, and then we have negative radicals, so we get square root of five. That is a number somewhere between two and three on a negative half number line. So, a good way to compare numbers is if you can convert them to a decimal and approximate it. At least then you can compare them to see where they're at. Now, obviously, numbers that have i in it. Um, are imaginary, meaning that they're the square root of negative 1. So these do not exist on a real number line. All right, so let's talk a little bit about rational and irrational numbers. Rational numbers are numbers that make sense. How do we define that? Numbers that can be defined as a fraction. By definition, that's what it is. So here we have 2 thirds. Um, there should be a number over here, so maybe like 1 over... 0.21. Really don't mix decimals and fractions. I'm not sure why I had that example on there. Um, but notice all of these can be expressed as either a whole number or a fraction. You know, you could take a whole number here and turn it into a fraction by putting over 1. Even the square root of 49 is a radical, but we can simplify it to 7. So that is a understood number that can be a terminated decimal or expressed as a fraction. Over here, these values cannot be expressed as a fraction. For instance, square root of 11 is a decimal that goes on forever, ever, and ever. So it's like three point something, and we can't terminate it using decimal places, so we have to express it using a radical. Same thing here, we see a decimal that goes on forever, it doesn't repeat. For instance, one third is a decimal that goes on forever, but it repeats, so we understood that to be one third, so that would be irrash uh, rational. Um, another great example of irrational is pi. And again, it's a complex number, as a decimal, it goes on forever, can't put in a fraction, so we came up with a symbol. Um, to represent that value, and again, it's very important for circles. Okay, so let's take a look here at the next opportunity. Here, again, just understanding what the different uh, words are: sum, difference, quotient, product. Okay, so this is stuff that we should know how to do. Um, great examples of this here. Um, again, order of operations. Again, this is something that we've been working on since grade school. But again, it is a big stickler for any algebra problem, knowing how to do things in order important thing is this, always whatever's in parentheses, you got to handle that first. And then obviously you want to do exponents and do them with what belongs to the base. Okay. After that, multiplication and division are of the same level. So you do whatever one comes first, going left to right. And then addition and subtraction comes after that. You know, here we've seen this a lot, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Not really the best thing because we want to make sure we understand that, you know, division can come before multiplication if needed. Okay, so here's some good examples of what to do. So when I see a problem like this, I'm going to say, hey, I have uh, work to do inside the parentheses, so I have to simplify that first. Then that's 3, and then we have to square it, take care of the exponents, which is 9. Then do multiplication, 18, and then do addition last. So here's a good example of um, different ways to do order of operations. Okay, in this portion here, uh, we're talking about... Um, converting units. So notice how do we take inches and convert to feet. So the key is you're not really multiplying by any different number, you're simply just converting by units. So we know that 1 foot and 12 inches are the same. So how do we get rid of the inches? Well you divide it out. If inches are on the top in this fraction and the bottom here, they cancel each other out and we have 1 foot 
left over. Okay. The nice thing is, the, as variables and numbers, as you reduce, you reduce units as well. So here, foots is the last thing left over. Okay. Notice if we have multiple conversions, miles to kilometers, and then we have um, hours to minutes to seconds. So how do we convert all that and so forth? So those are different things to look for in conversion. Okay, in this slide here, we're going to look at evaluating uh, expressions. Now, again, let's just talk a little quick about expression. Expression is basically like a statement. Notice there's no equal sign. It's simply an expression, and it's equal to some value. So how do we evaluate it here? Well, we simply just take the values and plug them in for the letters. So that's really all we're doing is just plugging them in. So again, it follows order of operations and so forth. So here's three good examples of what to see there. Um, and then obviously another thing is with expressions, we always want to simplify. And simplify goes with expressions because you don't solve anything here. You just simply simplify. So notice we have like terms where we have the bases and the exponents the same. So those x cubes can go together uh, where these cannot. Um, same thing here, we distribute first, um, and then we take a look at okay, x go together, y go together, and then that's our simplified expression. So these two have the same value, it's just more simplified. So you want to look at that as well. Okay, and then we see the same thing here in some problems. So here we have a word problem, so notice here you need to write an equation. Okay, so basically equation is taking an expression, set it equal to another expression. So the value of this expression here is equal to uh, $55 a month plus $100, $120 initial fee. So 55x plus 120 is an expression. Why is it an expression? You set them equal to each other, and that's where you get an equation from. So you probably want to go through these and take a look at some examples of how to set up equations to there. Um, here's some more solving. So again, notice expression equals expression. We want to solve it out and figure out what the the variable is. So again, this is just a lot of review. There's two problems that you could probably try on your own there. And then again, problem solving. I'm going to talk a little bit about this and the problem solving. Here's the key to every single algebra problem. Algebra is trying to figure out some unknown. So this little, if there's anything to really get out of this whole semester or a default program to do is this. All right, whenever you start with any problem, figure out a problem that's similar to what base equation can I use? So in this case, we're talking about distance equals rate times time. That always works. Okay. So you start with that equation, plug in what you know, and then you solve it, and it tells you what you don't know. Okay. So notice we plug in 230 here and 50. We realize we do not know t. So now we can solve for t, and that's how you get your answer. So start with the equation, plug in what you know, find out what you don't know. Very simple process on algebra. We'll be coming back to that all this year. No matter what the context of the math is, that's our basic game plan for a lot of problems. I'm going to stop the video here right now. Um, there's some more problems in this file. Uh, this is all in the shared folder. Again, everything's worked out, so you want to you know, go through that as well, but refer to this video as key elements to figure out.